Hello, welcome to Sketch Day. It is Monday. <clears throat> I don't normally go live on Monday, but I wanted to work on some CAD today. So I'm just using Fusion 360 and I'm just gonna mess around with some sketches here that I did for Banton Frameworks. Those glasses, I don't know if you remember this project, but I um, wanted to kind of take this into reality a little bit. Um, rough it out. I've never actually modeled glasses before, so I'm actually going to start by just doodling and sketching out kind of a plan. That's kind of how I work with CAD. Um, we'll see how far I get in an hour or so. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> I haven't even given you the, given you the full tour. Um, <clears throat> let's see, this is going to be tricky because I've got like a weird camera situation here. Um, I've got you guys on Instagram checking this out um, and also the overhead. So hopefully, hopefully you can see just fine. If not, this will all make sense. I hope actually maybe I'll do picture in picture for the YouTubers here so you can at least see me. Hi. Um, so yeah, usually, usually when I do... CAD, I start by sketching a little bit. I'll just move the Instagram camera. Um, <clears throat> so I start by sketching a little bit up front and that allows me to just kind of plan things out. So in terms of surface geometry, right, I'll probably have some main surface like this. Um, probably a sweep because from the cross section view, you know, if I'm looking at it this way, I want there to be a curve that way. And I also want there to be a curve this way. Now, I did take a look at some existing shades that I have. Um, here's some. The design is circular, so that's what I'm going with. It should be fairly simple. Um, that's another plus of, of keeping the, the, uh, the frames or the lenses circular. Um, I do like the um, look of simplicity, so that's, that's why I'm going to go with that personally. Um, but looking at the glasses and what I'm trying to do here is actually sight down the glasses. So if you look at the picture in picture, if you're watching on YouTube, um, I'm actually just looking to make sure and see, okay, is this actually crowning in any given direction? This one looks pretty planar in the one direction. Um, this one appears to be fairly planar as well. And this one. So I'm just going to assume that, you know, this is, this is straight up and down. So I can make just a quick note straight uh, up and down um, so this this type of sketching is what I call personal communication sketching where I'm just trying to work through things on my own and uh, <clears throat> think through the concepts at least the, the process of doing this so I know this is a straight line and then I'm gonna have a curve now for the rest of the shades right if I'm looking at this this is just a simplified view here so let's say we now transition to this view, which is the top. This is super confusing, but this is literally how I work. Um, so let's say this is the top and we've got our lenses here, right? The bridge and so forth. Now I have two other surfaces and I get to decide what those surfaces are gonna be. Now looking at the arms of these glasses, right? There's a certain curve to them. So from a top view, I may do something like this as far as the, the curve. Um, so what you're going to end up with is a surface like that. And then with that surface, I can make some cuts, right? So let me grab a marker here. So normally, yeah, so I have this whole surface and so now I can just plan on, oh, okay, this is how I'm going to cut things out and I can look at the arms of the uh, glasses here and decide okay where is this transition going to happen in my surface so looking from the top somewhere here you know and comparing these pairs because these are all pairs of glasses that I like um, I'll do a final measurement based on on the fit um, here these are electric brand these are G star and these are some off brand but I'm kind of obsessed with round glasses so looking at you know this kind of section it looks like there's a straight section and then we have kind of this compound curve almost. So somewhere in here, I'm gonna have to have a transition, right? 
So whatever that looks like, I'll probably keep it simple at first. My goal with this project is actually to 3D print <laughs> these glasses because I just got a 3D printer and I'm super excited. So I'm gonna try and 3D print them so I can do a test fit before Banton Frameworks, um, who's hooking me up with the uh, prototype or the, the custom specs um, before they go and cut and make everything. So this is a good opportunity for me to, to get the proof of concept um, done. It'll probably take a long time. What's up, Lynette? How are you doing? Um, yeah, I just I just felt like going live, and this this will be a dual stream on YouTube and um, Instagram at least as long as Instagram will let me <laughs> keep doing this. Okay, so step one, right, right there, I've got you know a sweep. Step two, I've got another probably sweep, and maybe a loft is what I'm guessing. So I'll probably have to at least at you know somewhere in this transition here, I'm gonna have to do a loft. And then I'm going to do some cuts. So that'll probably be my third step. Um, and then I'll work on details like the hinges and so forth um, when I get to that point, the bridge and all that. The bridge, I can probably get away with either an extrude or sweep. Okay. Um, I am going to build this as a half, right? So if you build a half, you can flip it and then you're able to um, mirror and you're fine. Junior is asking what 3D printer I have. I have the Monoprice Voxel 3D printer. I don't know if you guys have uh, seen that before, but it is, let's see, I'll show, show the uh, YouTubers here. Um, let's see, Monoprice, yeah. So it's, it's this one, the Monoprice Voxel. This is the one that I have and it is, Normally it's about 450 for the printer, as you can see here, but I got mine refurbished and on sale for about 250 bucks. I don't know if there's an easy way to do this. I could flip the camera for you Instagrammers <laughs> if you want to look at it sideways, but um, just working on my laptop here. Anyhow, so this is the 3D printer I have. Um, and I got it on sale. It's been running pretty much nonstop for the last two weeks. Uh, maybe just some minor breaks. I run it at night. I run it. It's running right now, printing a prototype part for a lighting project um, that I'm working on. So, yeah, it it's pretty good. I would say it uh, it's not super um, precise. Like I've I've noticed some errors here and there. If you watch my video on the marker caddy um, project that I did you'll you'll recognize that okay so here this is fusion 360 um, I think yeah I just created a new file my mouse is a little cruddy I'm using a Bluetooth mouse in case you're wondering um, and if you want a better view of this definitely head over to YouTube I have the full screen being streamed right now so you can check that out um, see what that looks like monitoring the chat all of that good stuff so if you have questions or um, whatnot hit me up in the chat on the YouTube and if something's blocked on the screen let me know I know I have that picture in picture up at least on the YouTube so well, I guess I could move myself somewhere like yeah right there I can move myself right there so you can still see me okay in fusion I don't know if you've used SolidWorks before um, I'm a SolidWorks guy that's where I came from and um, transitioned to fusion but I've also used Rhino alias um, dabbled in a little bit of pro E. So parametric modeling is kind of my jam. I love doing it and I'm not an engineer. So I build things differently than an engineer would. That's my disclaimer. The other disclaimer I'm going to add is that I know in any CAD program, there are a million ways to do things. I'm doing it my way today. <laughs> so thank you for all the suggestions that inevitably will come, but, um, this is just how I work. Okay. Here, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to build um, build this as a half, right? So I'm going to create a, a guideline, and I'm going to build the left half. I don't know. It just feels right. So here's a little guideline that I'm going to use. And in Fusion, you have all your tools and commands at the top. There's a timeline at the bottom, which is pretty cool. So I can go back if I want to modify something, um, if I want to move forward. Um, it's pretty easy to move forward as well. 
Someone's asking how much is Fusion? If you're a hobbyist or if you are um, a startup, I think the first year is free. So right now I'm using it for free. They are not sponsoring this video by any means. Um, the Voxel does have small build volume. That's the 3D printer. It's about 150 uh, millimeters cubed, if you will. So um, if you don't know what my YouTube address is, by the way, it is uh, youtube.com slash sketchaday.com or you can actually I should have done this a different way um, you can also hit up sketchaday.live okay so with fusion I can start a line here and right now it's set to construction but I'm just gonna click to the origin this is the center of the uh, universe if you will the 3d universe I'm gonna click here and then now as I'm about to do my next point I'm gonna click and drag this is not doing it this time Sometimes I swear. Okay, click and drag. Okay, it's not letting me do it. I think it's because this line's out here already. So let's try this one more time. Um, let's see, so click, click, and then click and drag. There we go. So now I have an arc that's tangent and I get to decide how far back that is. So since I'm not being precise right now, I'm just gonna tack it there. It's coincident to this line. There's an intersection point. Um, hit escape and now I'm going to click on that line and turn off construction. So that's a real line. Okay um, So that is my first line if you will and like I said, I guess I don't I don't need to um, I'm just thinking this is this is all the stuff in my head. This is raw I'm not trying to teach you how to do this so much as like here's my process <laughs> um, But as I'm thinking about this, I'm like, okay, I don't need to actually do that as a sweep I can just do it as an extrude so my first step here would be to um, kind of get the main points in, meaning, so for example, here, I'm just gonna drag that line back and then draw a line down, make this line not construction, okay? So if I were to extrude these features, yes, you can see the, if you're watching on Instagram, go to sketch a day, sketch, uh, day dot live so if you just type that in in your browser <clears throat> it'll take you to my YouTube and uh, let's see pin comment there we go so that's that's the URL <clears throat> if you want to catch the full like screen share um, anyhow so this will this will give me the first parts of my um, glasses here so like I was saying right for you guys on YouTube, you on Instagram, if you look at the arms here, they go a little straight and then they curve, right? So straight and then curve. These actually flare out a little bit. I do prefer, let's see, yeah, it's these. These are straight and then kind of come in. Actually, there's a slight curve, but we'll deal with that later. Um, and then transition. So I do prefer the feel of these glasses. I'm wearing them right now. Um, <laughs> so I do prefer the feel of these arms. Um, these are super comfortable, but they're a bit wide too and a bit obnoxious. And then these, um, they're snug and I like them, but these are definitely the most comfortable. Um, in fact, I bought a few pairs of these because I loved them so much and I keep losing my glasses. So I'm gonna use these as my initial guide here. So let's just set these to the side, get back to the laptop so you can see what's up. All right. This is Fusion 360, Autodesk Fusion 360. That's what we're using. Um, okay. So now I'm gonna add some constraints, some dimensions. And that's why I have my calipers with me, these guys. So caliper is super handy if you're an industrial designer and you are working on something. So there's a few things I can do. So for example, sometimes your calipers get out of alignment here. Just hit that zero ABS button and that's gonna reset the point. You wanna make sure these are closed though. So that means anything, I'm anytime I move the calipers now, let's see, let me cut here for the YouTubers. Anytime I move these calipers, these numbers will update and that's giving me a measurement and I can pick millimeters or inches. I'm gonna be working in millimeters today. So initial, initial thing, I wanna see how wide these are overall and including the, well, let's, let's go from the, uh, where the frames are terminating. So it's about 130. So for my initial dimension, 
to this center point, I'm gonna pick 130, but I'm gonna divide that by two because I'm only modeling half of this thing, okay? This line is looking really wonky right now and that's because I didn't set a constraint for it to be vertical. So I'm just gonna click that line and then hit that horizontal vertical and now that line is set to be vertical. Okay, so as far as how much curve in the front goes, I'm gonna leave this as something I can tinker with. Um, if I kind of like the initial uh, point here, what I can do is, again, I'm, I'm coming from SolidWorks, that's what I like to work in. So I can set a constraint here, and if I set this constraint, then, you know, let's say it's five millimeters, something like that. Um, then, yeah, sketchaday.live is a website URL. So I'll take you to my YouTube. Um, maybe I'll retype it, HTTPS, colon slash slash www and sketch. And I'll post the replay on YouTube as well day dot live oops typo post there we go boom all right so replace that pin comment there's the URL. uh gebra is asking do they have to cost 400 no i think these cost 100 bucks or something um they they are limited to about six inches so if you want bigger calipers they typically cost more money um, let's see. Whoa, we got tons of comments. There we go. Sorry, guys. Um, tons of comments on the YouTube. Let's see. Losing glasses is a real struggle. Yes, it is. <laughs> Retainer, camera. Okay. 3D print, you need CAD software. Yep. So I, I use Fusion to do all my CAD now because I left my job, like I said, and I needed something to do 3D, but I don't have $4,000 to spend on software. And I like that you can just pay per year. So that's what I'm doing. Um, just paying, paying per year or month or whatever. Um, Joseph says his calipers were 30 bucks. I actually designed and launched a Kickstarter, um, some calipers a while back, actually. That was pretty fun. Okay, so because I'm not like trying to factor in all the human factors stuff here, I'm going to fudge some things, but let's take some quick measurements. So let's go. Actually, I shouldn't have done 130. I should have done more. All right. So I'm just picking a straight section on the arms here that I want to follow. And I'm going to just say about 85 millimeters. Okay. So about 85 millimeters till we kind of hit a transition point. And these need to be a little wider. I'm going to go ahead and measure the entire frame here. These are 142, so 142, boom. That seems really proportionally off, but we'll roll with it for now. Oh, that's why, <laughs> it's supposed to be 142 divided by two. I was like, eh, that seems weird. Okay, so 142 divided by two. All right, so now I can do a, I can either do a solid or a surface, but I'm gonna do, um, a surface so let's go ahead and extrude and you have a couple options you can do let me let me pivot here so you can see so there's my 3d plane now and if I hit extrude I can pick well <laughs> let me go back actually because I moved a little fast so here's my sketch it's on a plane and now I want to hit surface because that's what I want to create and then hit extrude and if I pick the sketch now I can drag up and it'll create that 3D surface. But I wanna have it be symmetric because um, I just want it, I want it to be happening on both sides, right? So I'm just gonna pick some arbitrary um, dimension here, just bigger than the glasses would be in real life, okay? And then we're gonna cut or trim these surfaces and then thicken them to create our frame, at least the basic parts of the frame, all right. So hit OK, and now I can pivot, and there we have um, some initial surfaces. Like I said, this back surface is a little interesting because of how um, this plane transitions through space. Now, this is an area where I'm not super expert in fusion, so I'm going to have to think through this a little bit and see if I can create... Um, something that works so when i look at these glasses we'll switch back to sketching here and this is this is kind of how i work like i said if if i am 
working in CAD. So there's my initial plan. And as I'm working, sometimes I have to change uh, direction and like think of creative things. So I have these surfaces already done. Okay. This is our halfway point right there. And now I need to figure out, okay, how do I create this surface so that from the top view, I have something like this, right? That um, it's changing direction in two ways. So it's, it's um, angling in and there's a definite curve to all of this, okay? In fact, I probably should curve these sides now that I think about it. So I'll, I'll go back and change my profile, but um, more importantly, I need to figure out how to transition this edge. And as I'm imagining it, you know, there's probably some line that I can put at an angle and just loft. And if I create the loft in the right way, it's gonna give me the curve. So that's what I'm thinking right now. So let's try that. Uh, Gabriel says, you can get SolidWorks for cheap. An employee at a company I used to work told me about it since I've gotten, oh, okay. All right, I might hit you up. You can let me know. Um, I won't even buy like upgraded key shot yet because it's so expensive. So all my renderings look like they're from 2005, but that's all right. Um, let's see, let's edit profile sketch. So again, that's, that's one of the things with, uh, what do you call it? Parametric design is I'm able to just modify things as needed. I'm gonna click this line and hit construction so it no longer factors into the extrusion that I created. And I want to create an arc and I wanna do a three point arc. So that means I just pick one, two, and three points. So now this side should be curved. Oops, don't wanna do appearance, okay. So now this side of the frame should be curved. If I want, if I want more control over that, this is why I like SolidWorks and all this stuff. Um, I was actually a math major in college, so I like having structure, constraints, all of that stuff in place. All right, so if I need to control this line, I can draw two construction lines, something like this, turn those to construction, and now make these two tangent to each other. And if they're tangent, now I can just manipulate, I should be able to. It's not letting me do it. Let's see here. All right, some things are a little weird with this program sometimes. So let me get rid of this folder, let's make it a little bigger. But what I wanna do is make a line that is tangent to this curve so maybe I'll do that first. So make these two tangent, like so. Because now, well, I guess I can just set the angle. That's another way to do it. So if I give this a dimension here, now we say, okay, this is five degrees. Now it changes this curve, okay? So that's one way to, to kind of control those things if you're looking for a way to do that. And then on this one, I might do the same thing. Just give myself a dimension. I like to have construction lines where possible. That's just, that's just my jam. So I could go five millimeters there and I know I want this to be a nine degree angle and, or I could change that to five degrees, but it should change. So notice the curve here changes depending on what I input. So those constraints are nice and handy, especially if you're working with things against the body or whatever. And, oh, sorry guys, on the YouTube. Um, and you want to, um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm like jumping between Instagram and YouTube. But uh, it's nice if you wanna set those hard points and then be able to modify those. Okay, so let's hit finish sketch and looks like we are not quite updated. So I'm gonna go edit feature and pick this curve right there. Actually, let's go ahead and clear this and then now pick that sketch, hit okay. And now I have my two curve pieces. All right, so for the back, um, let me think of the best way to do this. I need to create a sketch, but in three dimensions or at least have a plane. So let's, let's create a reference point. So I'm gonna construct an offset plane from my initial plane and I'm just gonna drag it to wherever I think the end of this is. Or I could just go ahead and measure my glasses. 
I don't know why we're so zoomed in on the you on the Instagram. My apologies. There we go. So now I'm just going to measure the length of this arm of my glasses as best I can. So it looks like about what's this? 150 millimeters. So I'm going to go 150 and use this plane now so I can create a sketch on my new plane that I created. And you can see the grid is now moved to that position. So this box at the top right of the screen in Fusion allows you to quickly uh, pivot to certain points. So if I wanna rotate my model in a certain way, I can just click these arrows, edges, and so forth. And I'm now in that view. I'm using, I'm using Fusion 360. Yeah, using Fusion 360, just messing around. I'm not a CAD expert by any means. So don't come at me. <laughs> Don't at me, bro. Um, I am going to make these two equal. It feels right. I don't know if it'll work. So just click on this edge, click on this line, hit equal. Now they're equal length, OK? No matter where I put them. So the reason I did that, if I click Finish Sketch now, the reason I did that is so that I can now create a loft between these two edges, just like that. So in Profile 1, I should have some controls. I'm assuming this is going to be a lot like uh, SolidWorks. So here, for example, I can pick, uh, you know, I want these to be curvature con continuous, right? Cool. I don't know why I have an edge break there, though. It's kind of freaking me out. So let me edit this feature and see what I can do here. So profile one, guide rail, chain, tangent edges. I'm just playing around here. So let's see. I probably need to have some sort of guide rail. Okay, but more importantly, these surfaces are now uh, tangent, at least curvature continuous. So I'm just going to roll with it. It's going to drive me crazy. Maybe one of you fusion nuts can tell me how to uh, get this to at least show. Hmm. It was just tangent. I'll just, I'll still do curvature here, but let's see. I'm just messing around. Okay, just like that. All right, we'll go with it. I, I bet if I created a um, guideline or guard, guard, guide rail that it would be a little bit better. Thank you, Nathan. I'm glad you enjoy the YouTubes. All right, so now I've got these services. If you want to inspect it, we can throw on our zebra stripes on these services, and you'll see that they are continuous. There's just a weird break at the top. So anyhow, let's turn those off. At least I hope I can. Oh, yeah, there we go. So turn off zebra. All right. So now I've got these services, and this is going to determine the shape of my glasses. So now I'm going to move to the what's called the back here. And this is my opportunity now to uh, sketch and create the profile of the glasses. So I'm going to create a sketch on this plane. And like I said, I'm going with circles. I am obsessed with circular lenses. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm just going to throw some stuff in here. Um, you know, I definitely want to reference my sketch as much as I can. So here's that sketch that I did for you guys on the Insta. So this is kind of the direction I'm going. I know I have to make some changes with the bridge, um, just working or talking with the guys um, who are making these glasses, but this is kind of what I'm going for. So I'm gonna start by sketching in these circular lenses and again, using these shades as a guide. Now, I do like the diameter of these lenses. Let's see if they're actually circles. I don't think they're perfect circles. I think these might be, but let's see here. So I've got 56. I'm just taking some points around the perimeter, 56, 57. So there's a little bit of thickness added, particularly as we come up into the um, bridge, bridge of the shades here, okay? It's a little bit of thickness added, but I'll keep it simple. I'll keep it simple for now. 
All right, so 50, I'll just say 57, but I do want mine to be a little thicker, okay? So, you know, whereas this rim is 4.8, let's say, um, I actually want them to be more like seven, seven and a half. So if these need to be seven and a half and we have 4.8, this is where I have to do a little math. So 7.5, 4.8, I've now have, uh, let's see, 15, oh yeah, <clears throat> 15 minus eight, seven, and then so two points. So I need to add 2.7 overall um, to the diameter, okay? So again, we have 56.8, and I wanna add 2.7 on either side, so 5.4. So let's do 60.5 for the dimension. That's what we're gonna end up with. So I'll do 60.5. And just so I put a point in here, I'm gonna create a quick sketch offset. And like I said, I want these frames to be around seven and a half in width. Yeah, Fusion is, oh, hey, Paul. <laughs> Paul actually works with Autodesk, a friend of mine. So thanks. Look the other way, Paul, if I'm doing this incorrectly. <laughs> I was just explaining to these guys, this is just how I work. We're having fun here. All right, so I have I have an idea of, okay, that's where my cutout's gonna be. Um, just for some reference points, well, let me, let me think on this real quick. Yeah, because I wanna cut, um, let's see, I do wanna cut the, I forgot what it's called, bridge in. Well, not the bridge, but where the arm <laughs> meets, meets the lens. So I'm gonna hit edit sketch. And now let's throw in a line somewhere. Okay, so this line I'm throwing in, if you take a look at these shades, I did it again, camera view. Um, but if you look at these shades, where the arms meet the lenses, it's not exactly halfway in the lens. It's a little bit offset, okay? So for you guys on the Insta, right there, it's not exactly halfway. So I'm gonna just kind of guesstimate a little bit but let's put this in. So we've got this line just as a reference point. And now I can create another line here. I do hate these MacBook keyboards um, because I don't have a real escape key and I haven't upgraded. My frustration level isn't high enough for me to be persuaded to upgrade. All right. That's Move this up, okay, boom. All right, so I just I just duplicated that line basically. Now I want the thickness of this bridge to always match the uh, thickness of the rim here, or the lens. So let's put some reference geometry in to help us be parametrically superior. And all right, draw a couple lines here. These are all just construction lines to kind of help things out. So another construction line here, boom. And now I can pick, okay, I want to, oh yeah. That's what I wanted. I need to put another construction line in. because. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can just click these two lines. Okay, let me deselect everything. One, two, and go equal and now these will always be equal so if I change one of these so let's say I change the dimension here to 5 why is it not letting me do that eh, 16 okay I set that diameter Boom. oh that's why I need to change this dimension so if I set this to negative 5 now it updates this portion of the lens okay so that's a relationship I want to preserve um, and that's why I am keeping that in place. Now, Fusion's, Fusion's really interesting because you don't have to trim a lot of stuff. Like in SolidWorks, when I used to work in SolidWorks, you have to trim and make sure everything's like perfect before you did an extrude or trim or anything like that. Um, in this case, I don't have to do that. So that's, that's certainly been um, an interesting thing here. And I'm actually realizing I made a mistake in my construction order. I shouldn't have made these same bodies okay so 
I'm gonna go ahead and edit this feature. And there's probably a better way to do this. I mean, let me think on this. Can I trim? I wonder if I can split a surface. Unstitch? Can I do that? Okay, so now we should have three bodies, but that's not what I want. I actually want to before my loft. So this little timeline, you can drag that back. And I'm still learning Fusion, by the way. So there are commands that I'm familiar with in Photoshop that I'm not super familiar with in Fusion. Um, there's things in Fusion that never, or sorry, not Photoshop, but uh, SolidWorks. There's things in Fusion that didn't exist in SolidWorks. So looks like Fusion crashed. Oh no. Okay, so back to, let's see, where was I? Oh, I did need to create that additional plane. So I'm going to go to Construct offset plane and we're gonna offset uh, wrong plane. So construct offsets. And I think we had decided 150, so we're there. And now I wanna sketch on my new plane. Okay, so now I'm on that new plane and I'm gonna go ahead and sketch a line. And this line will be at a slight angle like so just arbitrary for now and I want these two lines to be equal the edge that I created hit ok before I do that however I forgot I wanted to split these two so let's unstitch the surface and then roll forward again and now create a loft between these two lines and make sure that profile one is set to either tangent or G2. I like G2 because why not? And now we have surfaces that we can use for our glasses. Okay. And because I saved the file, I believe Fusion should be auto saving it. Yeah, they should be auto saving it. <laughs> Do you want me to turn off the picture in picture too? Yeah. Okay, so back to, uh, feel free to stay as long as you can. I'll, I'll clean up the video and re-upload it when we're done here. Um, just cut out some of those awkward face shots that you've got. Thanks for joining if you're on the Insta or wherever. Um, okay, so I do want to create a sketch on the front plane now. Let's get our lenses in. All right, so... I'm actually going to do this a little bit differently. So let me set the overall desired dimension, which I think I decided was, let's see, three and a half, three and a half, seven plus. So about 63. And then now I can create an offset. Okay. And let's do, I think I said seven. Oops. Negative seven. I need to flip that offset. So negative seven. And put a reference line in actually I can just put it let's see so all of this is gonna be construction line stuff right where these two intersect for example hit construction construction boom okay and the reason for that is so that when I do create uh, let's see, edit sketch. Not done with that sketch. So instead of uh, instead of two lines, I'm just gonna do a rectangle here because um, it's just as easy. And I can say these two lines, I want you to always be equal to each other. Boom. So I've set up that relationship, and now I can drag this and position it wherever I want. Okay. Um, I will. You get way better surface continuity using sweep or loft. Um, that's what I was doing, Paul. I was using a, uh, a loft, and I couldn't figure out couldn't figure out uh, a couple things, but I'll bug you later. Jeff Smith's also been helping me transition to Fusion. Okay, so this front surface, what I want to do now is trim, and I can use this sketch as a trim tool. Okay, so it's going to try and trim... I wonder if it's going to try and trim all the surfaces, because that's not cool. I really just want to trim uh, this surface here. So let's see. I may have to do something a little bit different. There's a couple of different ways I could do this. I could thicken surfaces, or I could cut um, solids. So I'll show you. I'll show you the solid cut way. 
So if I do extrude, and now I pick the parts of the sketch that I want to extrude, okay, and I can extrude this, say, uh, whatever thickness, or we could do extra thickness, whatever. Um, I'm just gonna pick something arbitrary for now, and let's pull dimension, let's say five millimeters, okay? So now I have this extrusion, five millimeters, um, that I've made. Actually, it does need to be more, so let's edit this feature, and I'll just over, uh, what do you call it, over, uh, over extrude there, and now I'm going to offset these two surfaces, so create, or is it modify, I can never tell if it's under create or modify, okay, it's create offset, and it gives me a direction here, I can pick in. Um, now, one of the things I did do is I um, unstitched <laughs> of the surface. So maybe what I'll do is before I create my offset, I'm gonna go back into my little timeline at the bottom here and delete this unstitch. So now it's deleted. And we're gonna go with the solid model cut mode. Tazbot says, if you had the other surfaces in the tree and then trim it, it won't cut the hidden. Okay, got you. So it's, it's just operating on what it can see, which totally makes sense. Thank you for the tip. Um, so now I'm going to create offset and it should, well, let's, let's stitch these together first. So I hit stitch. Now this is all one surface and I can create offset and this offset is going to drive all my cuts and so forth for the, uh, model here. So let's pick something like three or actually it was supposed to be five. That's 35. That's not what we want. Okay, so edit feature, um, offset, and I want to do five. It's thought it was 35 because I forgot to um, reset my control there. Is that what I really want though? That's not what I really want. So what I need to do is offset this surface. So create offset. We're gonna offset this surface by five. All right, hit okay. And at the same time, I need this surface here to clear the, the uh, let me turn off this body so you can see what I'm talking about. So I need it to clear the uh, solid file here. A couple ways to do that. I could modify the solid in a way that makes it clear, or I could just hit um, extend, pick this edge and just drag this out. And now I have a surface that I can use to cut. So. Let's do under solid create. Uh, I think it's I think it's under solid. It's modify. I always forget. I know thicken is under surface. Let's see modify. Again, I'm coming from SolidWorks, so I'm used to things being in a certain place. So pardon me if I poke around here for a minute. One like equal one prayer for the deceased CAD file, says net. <laughs> okay, I could do split body, but what I'm really trying to do is, okay, let's, let's see if split body will do it. Um, I mean, I know it'll split it, but I really just want to um, cut with that surface. It's right there, go to surface. Okay, so surface, uh, there's trim, extend, create, extrude, sweep, revolve. For you guys who know, this is probably painful. It's like when you're watching your, um, watching your dad like pick around for something. I can't find it. What's up, Bumblebee? <laughs> you're like, I can't find the, the damn clicker or whatever. Um, okay, you know what? Just for time's sake, I'm just gonna go with, uh, where is it? Split. I think it was split. Where is it? <laughs> uh, you're probably like yelling, it's right there, it's right there. But I'm just gonna split it, okay. Splitting tools, one, body to split. I'm gonna pick this guy, hit okay. I'll just, I'll just turn this off. It's fine, it's fine. 
It's all good. Actually, is that the one I want to turn off? Yeah, that's the one I want to. Okay. So, let's turn back on our surfaces here. And I need to do another cut as well, or split. So, let's go ahead and modify split body. Um, body to splits. This guy, splitting tool. I'm going to pick these guys. Hit OK. See if that works. It's not letting me do it. Probably, probably because we're close to tangent at this point. That's my guess. Are we? <laughs> it's finally, it's nice to finally not be the student when watching you. Hey man, I always, I always say I'm always learning. So, um, no problem there for me. Let's do symmetric. Because then I can trim out the rest, I think. I also don't know why this sweep is not... Okay, so let's, let's see if we can do... I keep hoping Paul will chime in and rescue me here, but... Um, let's do split body. It's weird that there's no... At least to my knowledge, there's no... Um, There's no cut with surface. I'm used to that with SolidWorks where I could cut with surface. All right, so the reason I did that, just, just so you guys can see, is so now we have at least the first portion of the design kind of blocked in. Okay, I am gonna switch this one more time, YouTubers. So we've got the first lens in and a little bit of the arm and I can make some adjustments. So that's, that's a big step in the process. <laughs> Um, and so back to the 3D there. There's a the sketch, guys. S and then write thicken. I don't want to. I don't want to thicken the surface though. I don't like thickening surfaces. I I much prefer um, cutting from uh, a surface if I'm going to be working that way. Okay, so I have this surface um, as a result of the cuts. Let's turn our working surfaces back so we can kind of see what these cut tools are. All right. So now I've got to get the arms in and I initially I had this interesting thing. I know YouTubers, I lied. We're cutting again. Um, but in one of these sketches, I actually had an idea and I think I'm going to bring it back at least for this, this 3d printed model. Let's see if I can find it here. Oh yeah, there we go. So I had this idea where the frame ends were like protruding forward, almost like, so if this is the frame here, right, or the arm, and here's our piece that we just modeled. Okay, here's one lens side, and the bridge would be, you know, somewhere here. Something like that. So I had this idea where maybe these ends stuck out you could even tip them with metal or something. I just thought it'd be cool to have something like that. You know, and maybe now I can kind of decide, okay, as far as the articulation hinge and all of that, what does that look like, right? So those are all things that I like to do and sketch as I'm catting something up. Just a quick doodle to figure out that detail so that when I implement it in the sketch, I'm like, okay, this is good, or maybe it's not. But again, one of the advantages of parametric modeling is I can go back, theoretically anyways, and <laughs> modify a bunch of stuff here and have my arm in place. Okay, so for the arm, let me think on that. I think I need to go a little bit wider. I need to go a little bit wider because My live video on YouTube and or Instagram ended. So I gotta restart that. Um, but I do think I need to go a little bit wider with that initial sketch. So let's roll back in the history tree here. And if I'm incorporating the arm, I need about another five millimeters or so. Although that's gonna affect the overall fit. So maybe it's more so the position of the lens. So let's go ahead and review that. Um, I did initially have, let's see, 
Here's my extrude. So I'm going to edit this profile sketch. Let's take a look at it here. Okay, so I had the um, frame here at seven, but really I don't need it bigger than this lens. So what I need to do is actually take this dimension, which is, let's say 56, I'm gonna be generous and make it more like 57. And since that's 57 now, I can measure across, just guesstimating at this point, I'll fine tune and refine later. So we're about six millimeters offset. Put some more, put some more construction lines here. Gives me a chance to measure some things out. And now I can add a dimension. Come on, to the origin. Why is it not letting me do that? Okay, let's clear the dimension command. Now let's add a dimension from this line to the origin. There we go. So I know that's about six, okay. Which gives me a little bit more room here to work with on the arm. So let's check that out, see what we're dealing with. Yeah, this mouse keeps uh, cutting out on me. do not want to model with my trackpad. Let's see, Jordan says you might be able to do it under the combined body command. There's a cut body option. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Like in SOLIDWORKS, I remember there was a, you know, cut with surface, which makes sense. It's like I've got the surface, so I want to cut it. Um, that totally makes sense. What doesn't make sense is that I have to split and then hide it. But uh, one thing I do know about the Fusion team, they love feedback, so. There you go, guys, you got some feedback. All right, so for this um, arm now, what I wanna do is, let's see, let me think on this. I'm gonna draw the arm shape from the side view. I may need to switch mice to a, a corded mouse because this is driving me crazy right now. It's like everything decided to fail on me this morning. Just as I was pretending to no CAD with you guys. <laughs> um, so from the side view here, let's see. Yeah, this, this thing keeps crapping on me. I don't know what's happening. It might just be dying and I don't wanna go get batteries. Okay, side view, let's see. I wanna create a sketch and I'm just gonna do it on this plane. Should I do it on that plane though? Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here, guys. Um, now I'll just, just because I'm weird like this, I'm gonna actually create, let's see. I don't need this sketch though, so I'm gonna delete. And Let's construct a, an offset plane from this guy. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it here. I'd rather sketch on the outside, so that's what I'm gonna do. Sorry Instagrammers, if you're just joining, I was working in Fusion and we had a little mishap. Um, okay, so sketch on this plane and now boom. Okay, so now I'm sketching on this plane from the side. This is driving me crazy. Okay, so now I'm gonna try and model these arms, All right? And so I'm looking at trying to sketch what these look like from the side view. All right, so from the side view here, let me turn off this surface, or these surfaces rather, because now I can at least make some things coincident, like there, okay. I know I want those points 
This one might be already coincident. Let's go ahead and delete. All right, so now that's coincident. I'm gonna move this over like so. And mind you, all these thicknesses are the um, same, okay? So if I update the frame thickness, it's gonna update the sidearm. Now, that might be something I want, it might not be something I want, but it's something I can work with for now. Um, looking at these arms, however, <laughs> okay, it's a little bit of thinning going on from the side view. Um, if you were to look at one of these, so it's like thick and then it goes a little bit thin. So I could pull some measurements um, and kind of incorporate that as we go. I'm pr I'll probably just add a simple geometric cut to get that where I want it to be. The more important part is making sure that, let's see, I believe the dimension was about 80 or we could pull from the surface and just say, hey, um, when you get to this point, be coincident on this line. And that's a relationship I could set up. Um, let's see, it might already even be there. No, it's not. So I pick these two lines, hit coincident. Um, and if I want these two points to be um, consistent, I could do that. But like I said, I'm just going to thin my arm out on my glasses and then I'll, I'll figure out the transition here as I go. Let's give myself some thickness and measure. Thank you for answering all the questions, by the way. Um, like I said, I'm more of a SOLIDWORKS guy. I just transitioned to Fusion. I've been using it for a few months, not consistently. So a lot of stuff still is like, ooh, how do I do that? Um, so I do appreciate it. Okay. So here, I'm trying to decide, do I want to do, a f do, I wanna do some sort of design thing, whatever. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a line because I can fill at this after the fact. If I want to create an interesting transition there, um, you know, and play with play with those relationships, let's make these two collinear. Boom. Ah. Again, this mouse is just wigging out on me. I think it's time for a new mouse, guys. Okay, we'll make that coincident collinear. All right, so that shouldn't move now. And now I've got to figure out the rest of this. So for the rest of this, again, I have this line tool selected. So if I want this to be all curved, I can do that. If I just want a smooth curve and then go straight, I can do that as well. Um, so I'll do something like this. And these two have a tangent relationship now. Okay. If I want to have another tangent relationship, I can do that like so. Or I could have them be um, co-radial. That's, that's another thing I could do, but we'll have them taper for a bit. And then at this point, I want to kind of rough out, um, let me just try and get the right angle in here. I don't have a protractor to measure the angles, so we're just gonna eyeball things and see um, how far we get. All right, I'm going to I'm going to switch mice because this is driving me crazy. So, I'm going to uh, switch over here, see if All right. So, turn that guy off. Okay, whoo, this is much better. Much better. This is a an old Logitech mouse that I was using on my Mac Pro. So, I won't be able to control my Mac Pro now. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, let's do construction. And then, like I said, I'm just eyeballing the angle between these two lines. And I'm going to venture and say we're about 135 degrees. Uh, it looks like maybe a bit more. Yeah, it looks like a bit more. So we'll do 150. All right, so if that's 150, then that's kind of the curve or transition I need to make or point I need to eventually be at. You could think of it that way. Um, so let's just drag this out as a guideline, and now I can move these curves for this transition. You know, maybe even use that as a helper. And let's see. Now at this point... Let's just block in 
the end of our glasses. Okay, let's make these two tangent. These two need to be tangent as well. And if these are tangent, um, what's going to control this should be, well, two things, should be the width of this section. Um, I could also determine or specify, hey, you know, this angle here needs to be 90 degrees or something. Like, let's say that's just the end of my um, eyeglass tip. I think I'm going to... I'm gonna make the end of my tip round, is what I think I'm gonna do. But I have this line guiding. I can I can eliminate this constraint if I want to. Um, if you guys are wondering what I'm doing, I'm using Fusion 360 Autodesk product to basically model something up that I was working on. All right, so there I've got you know, some sort of end of the glasses. And like I said before, overall, so I have an overall target length in mind. All right. So drawing these lines in place gives me a chance to say, hey, this distance needs to be 150. I know that. So what does that mean? Okay, so 150 all the way to the end there. Um, is that accurate? Because if that's the case, then I need to go a little bit longer. Just measuring here real quick. Yeah, we're about 150. So I need to go a little longer. Um, this bender transition is probably happening too soon. So I'll eliminate that coincident uh, relationship. Get rid of that. Now I can pull this out. Right. Have I tried using a 3D mouse? No, I don't like him. I mean, I've tried it. I just, I learned on regular mice. And so I don't think I ever would make the transition, <laughs> honestly. I will say there are some things that are weird about this program like I'm trying to get these two to be coincident but because I deleted coincident I have to like make them meet again it's weird so I'll just redo that Let's turn off this surface because I think it's kind of messing with me. All right. So just trying to create a profile sketch that I can use here. <laughs> this is the method to my madness. I'm trying to create a profile sketch that I can use to trim the uh, final sketch, the trim the final body I'm going to create for the arms. So that's really what I'm doing. And let's let's just do like 15 degrees here and let's make I'm just gonna keep this simple because the the non co-radial um, <laughs> circles here are just like tripping me up 